Hello guys, I'm Juan Gea from Bone Studio and today it's a tutorial day. So we are going to see how can we use the new Uber shader from Blender 2.79, the principal shader. So some of you may recognize this picture that I did for an article I wrote for, for CG Press reviewing Corona Render around uh, 1.5 version of uh, Corona Render. So I did this picture because I think those materials are more or less generic uh, and you can recreate all this with the Corona material. So what I did is to recreate this scene but with cyclos and with the new principal shader. So this is the result. As you can see it's pretty similar. In fact I think I like more the, the cyclos version. It's more modern also. But here you have Corona and here you have Cyclos. Corona and Cyclos. So what can you do with uh, the principal shader? You can do any dielectric material or some transmissive materials or any metallic material. In this case, this means that you can do all these five materials, but you cannot do this material. For this material, we need the standard volume, volume shaders we have inside the, the Blender collection. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate these two materials, these metals and these dielectric plastics. So, let's go to it. Let me remove this. And here we have the scene. We are going to make this bigger. And border render uh, here we go okay we're going to, to start with this metal that is some kind of copper metal and to do this it's pretty straightforward pretty pretty simple you can see here the the principle the principle say there has one specific feature in, in other materials, in other render engines, you have one color for the reflection color of the metal, so to speak, and one base color. And basically, when you enable uh, the metallic property of a PVR shader completely, the base color uh, doesn't have any effect on the, on, the, on the object, because that metal object don't have any kind of diffuse property. In this case, the base color is used in two ways. It can be used as the diffuse color or albedo color of the material, as you can see here, and it's also used as the reflection color of the metal uh, property. So if we, let me duplicate this, if we go and we start to change this color. Let's define this as uh, completely white. We have some kind of silver. And if we want have something similar to gold, and uh, here we have an electric metallic blue, something red. Okay, so this color is not just the diffuse color of the uh, dielectric material, but it's also the reflection color of the metallic material when we define this as a metallic uh, shader. Now, how can we achieve this bruised metal uh, effect? We have uh, different possibilities, but the one I used is, uh, is as, as follows. So, we have the standard metal uh, material, metal object, our base color is uh, white, not uh, fully white. Please don't ever use uh, 1.0 for white or 0, 0.0 for black. Use instead uh, 0 0.8 for white and 0, I think it was 0 0.02 for black, more or less. But uh, don't use fully black. Okay, so we have the base color. We have uh, the metallic property at one. We have our roughness. With a roughness, oh, let me show you that here. With roughness, we can define, I think everybody knows that, but 
just in case. With a zero roughness, we have a perfect mirror. Here we have. And if we increase our roughness, we have a fully blurred reflection that is some kind of matte. So with roughness, we get blurred reflections. Okay, great. I don't remember the value. It's, it's okay. Okay, now, so we have our metal defined to 1.0, our roughness defined to 0 0.25. Uh, forget about this, this scene team for now. And how can we give this material the uh, brushed metal effect? It is pretty simple. I, I just use a mass grave texture. We can see the texture here. It's a mass grave texture. I used a texture coordinate with the UVs because this, this object has UVs. And here I use the, the point option and a scale of 0 0.1 and 2 and 2. So in this, in this case, I get this effect like uh, some elongated noise, something like a brussel metal would look like. Okay, and we use this in the metallic property, and we have here that brussel metal. This is just one option. We, we can recreate this in several things. Uh, another way is we are going to, these colors are not going to give us any grade in wrongness. So we are going to invert, invert the colors and input this in roughness. And here we have another kind of brusset metal. We can decrease this and we can mix this with the value we had before. Okay, here we have another way to recreate this. And another way to recreate this is through bump or displacement. But in this case, well, we can use this here in displacement. We can control this with the factor. Okay. But I don't recommend this, this method. I simply prefer the to use or the roughness option or the metallic option i think both are, are valid now how can we recreate this plastic material we're going to see the orange material and the black material the orange material is pretty straightforward you just have the the principal shader connect to the surface and you define the color but instead of using the metallic to gain reflections or reflectivity, because in this case you are going to be uh, changing the properties of the material and a plastic is not a metal. So don't do this to get reflectivity over your plastic. You have to use the specularity, the specular value. So we can go up to 1.0. I removed the specular chain. I'm going to explain that now. And we get the specularity give us the, those reflections. So the specular value has uh, a characteristic, a, a feature that is that manually you can go up to 1.0, but in fact, you can enter here more than 1.0 to, uh, let's say, uh, to fake the, the value uh, and achieve a uh, higher reflectivity. So for example, we can input here four and we get higher reflectivity or 20, we go crazy and higher reflectivity, only 100. Okay, but it's not recommended. You, in the documentation of Blender of the principal shader, you can see a formula, a mathematical formula to achieve the correct specularity value for any object based in its index of refraction. Of refraction. So in this case, we can use whatever we want. We want. So I prefer 0.4, I think it was. And now, what is the specular tin? The specular tin is going to tint the reflections with the base color we have here. 
So, for example, if I go one in a specular chain, you see that the reflections are completely tinted. So if we go to 20, the, the reflections, uh, the color of the, of the reflections is completely tinted. We go to zero, the color of the reflections is uh, more white or more the, the real color of the reflectivity. So in this case, 0.4 and a bit of tint, just a tiny bit. So in this case, we use uh, also a bit of roughness because just because I, I don't like the perfect clear surfaces, I like it to have a, a bit, a tiny bit of, of roughness. So I think it was 0 0.05. It's it's enough, but it's uh, bre it's breaking the the surface already with this. Now, how can we achieve this? this black plastic it's the same kind of material so it's it's pretty simple we have our black Re uh, remember never use uh, total black we have the uh, specularity we want we have the roughness and that's it we have this kind of black plastic so that's it for now uh, guys i hope you like the video in the next video we are going to review this specific material that is glass and some kind of a specific a spatial material that is mixing several things so i hope you like the video if you like it please press the like button subscribe to our channel if you want more tutorials and more videos like this in spanish and english and see you in the next video bye guys